Bien, alors euh, on est ravi de nous entretenir aujourd'hui avec euh, Delia Sherman au sujet donc de, de ses livres, de son œuvre et euh, donc euh, à l'occasion donc de, de sa venue pour les Utopiales 2017. Oui. Alors euh, bonjour Delia. Euh, alors pour commencer, est-ce que vous pouvez vous présenter un petit peu et nous dire comment vous en êtes arrivé à, à l'écriture uh, Um, I did not, I mostly wrote for myself. Uh, I took a writing course when I was in college, mm -hmm. and they wanted me to write stories that were very serious, that were very real, uh, things that had happened to me when I was young. Um, I found this very boring. I had found it boring to live through. I did not want to write about it. So I decided I was never going to write again. Um, about I read a great deal of science fiction and fantasy in the 1960s, which is when I was out of school and being mm -hmm. in graduate school. And um, I, just, I kept thinking as I taught my courses um, in, in, in English, you know, I can do this as well. Well, I was wrong, but I learned after a while. Uh, but I, I found that I had stories to tell that I wanted to write. And so mm -hmm. I wrote and wrote and wrote until finally I got published. <laughs> Et euh, donc, vous avez une, une formation d'historienne No, I was trained as, um, I, 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 my, my degree, and I mm -hmm. have a PhD, um, is in English, literature, mm -hmm. uh, non-Shakespearean Renaissance drama. Uh, but what I discovered that although I am not a very good critic, I am an extremely good researcher, mm -hmm. and a good scholar. So I used the skills that I had learned in order to write my dissertation, which was a scholarly dissertation mm -hmm. and not a critical one, um, to, to re research historical novels. Uh, I think that the reason that I was not interested originally in, in, in studying history was because for me history was 1492, mm -hmm. Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and I was not interested in great men, Um, and I was not interested in dates, so what I was interested in was social history, which was not mm -hmm. taught when I was in school. So uh, since then I have become interested in social history, and that is what I read, what I'm interested in, and what I get my stories from. Donc, euh, au niveau de vos influences et inspirations, euh, est-ce que votre euh, parcours euh, bah, académique vous sert euh, dans vos histoires ouais. Well, no, <laughs> not really. I have written two short stories mm -hmm. that are written in Elizabethan English because I can. Um, I have never, most of the, everything that I have written is, 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 is historical, but I have gone through many centuries. I have mm -hmm. written one in 13th century England. I have written in the 19th century. My second novel was set in 18th century France on the eve of the French Revolution. Um, so I have skipped all over history because I was never an expert, so I was able to follow whatever I desired. Et euh, donc dans, sur, sur vos petites biographies, par exemple, on parle souvent de fant Fantasy of Manners. Oui. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire à ce sujet Est-ce que vous êtes d'accord avec ce, ce terme, avec ces mots et euh, si oui, est-ce que vous pouvez euh, nous dire euh, qu'est-ce que c'est, ce que c'est Well, I am a feminist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was part of, I think, what they call the second wave of feminism in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, I read Simone de Beauvoir. I read a lot of different things. And I was very, you know, women are equal people too. Mm -hmm. And that is part of who I am. So I write fantasy, so of course, because I can't write anything else but feminism because that's what I am. Um, so that's, I am very interested in, in fairy tale, mm -hmm. in folklore, in mythology, um, the, the, the mythos of any given culture. And when you look at it from a woman's point of view rather than from what is supposed to be um, a universal point of view, which is mostly male, it looks different. So I, I write what I write, and it is by because that's because I'm writing it. It tends to be fantasy, and it tends mm -hmm. to be feminist. <laughs> Et donc dans vos histoires, euh, donc vous, vous disiez que 
vous aimiez bien les, les contes de fées, les, euh, toutes ces histoires-là, est-ce que, est, est que ça répond à quelque chose de, de, de profond finalement de, bah, Par exemple, dans les contes de fées, on retrouve quelque chose qui, qui parle à toutes les générations et à toutes les époques. Est-ce que c'est -ce, est -ce, est ce que vous voulez euh, faire aussi dans, dans, vos, dans vos livres Um, I am not good, in, good at making up stories. This is my very, this is my secret. <laughs> uh, so I steal. Mm -hmm. And the best, and, and the, the basic structures of story mm -hmm. are all in folklore. It doesn't matter which um, culture it comes from. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the details are. It's that there is something that somebody wants and needs for some important reason, and that thing is either discovered or is lost. And those are, it can be love, it can be a magic ring, it can be anything. But all of those structures and the ways in which you find or lose whatever the thing is that you're looking for, is that's the structure of story. So if I pick a fairy tale in my head, I'm not retelling the fairy tale, mm -hmm. I am using the structure of that fairy tale, which is, does Cinderella go to the ball? Is, is she recognized for the person that she actually is rather than the person her stepmother wants her to be? And you can do so much with that. And you can write a story and, and have in your head Cinderella, and nobody will ever know, because it's not the details It's the understructure of the whole thing. So almost everything I write in my head is a fairy tale, even if it's not on the page. Donc vous avez aussi euh, travaillé comme euh, éditrice, oui. éditeur, publisher. Yes. Oui, oui. Et euh, en quoi c'est différent ou c'est lié avec votre travail d'écrivain I think that it, for, for me, if, if, you, if, if somebody is a pianist, mm -hmm. is, a, is, a, is a musician, you do five finger exercises, which makes your fingers more agile, mm -hmm. um, which allows you to hear how things are supposed to go. Um, it, it's, it's, it's the structure of music. And for me, both editing and teaching, mm -hmm. which is something I have done a great deal of as well, is like doing exercises. It's like in basketball, if you do layups, you just over and over and over again. You're looking not at the result as much as you are looking at the process. And for me, both editing and teaching are like exercises. Mm -hmm. And then when I come to my own writing, I have all of that in my head and in my body, and I turn it off, but I still have it. So it makes it not easier because it's never really easier to write, but it makes me think, oh, I'm having this problem. This mm -hmm. is a problem I have seen before. If I do this, maybe it will make it easier. So exercises I give my students, I do myself. Um, things that I say when I read a, a, a scene and I say, oh, that doesn't quite work when I'm editing, I say, oh, Maybe these are questions I can ask myself and I can make it better later. So um, I think that they work together that way. Mm -hmm. Et euh, au niveau de, des, des lectures que vous pouvez faire euh, ou autres, est-ce qu'il y aura un, un ouvrage ou des ouvrages que vous, vous inviteriez nos, les personnes qui vont voir cette interview à lire éventuellement ou qui serait euh, une, une introduction à votre œuvre aussi Um, the best introductions to my work is mm -hmm. um, I, they're all very different. <laughs> they all have to do with folklore and fairy tale, but I have two different kinds of work. Mm -hmm. Three, really. Um, I have written four, two, two novels for adults, four novels for, no, three, three, well, two and a half novels for adults because one is a, is, is a collaboration mm -hmm. with, with my wife. Um, Ellen Kushner, and th those are very much for adults. And then I have four novels that I have published for, for um, children from 10 mm -hmm. years up. Uh, so those are very different, obviously. <laughs> uh, and I have also written uh, about 50 short stories. Mm -hmm. And those, some of them are for children, most of them are for adults. They are all historical. Uh, if, you, if you like historical novels, you know, like big, thick, 
historical mm -hmm. novels, The Porcelain Dove, I think, is, is the best of those. Um, it's about, um, it's about eight, the 18th century France, writ, set at the very, right, right before the French Revolution and just mm -hmm. a little bit into it. Um, and of my children's books, the one that is closest to my heart is actually published in France. It's called um, La Labyrinthe de la Liberté, mm -hmm. and exactly. it is a historical novel that is set in the American South during the, the Guerre de, de la Secession, mm -hmm. and, uh, well, right before. I like right before the war. <laughs> and uh, that, 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 I think, is the, one of the novels that is closest to my heart. Um, I have a collection of short stories. I have had several short stories uh, published in France, but everything I write is uh, just a little bit different, except that it's always fantasy and always feminist. <laughs> et euh, est-ce que l'écriture pour adultes et pour la jeunesse c'est différent? They're very different. Um, in in when when you're writing for a serious adult, mm -hmm. um, and and. There are, I, I can spend more time on something. I can do more description. I can do passages of reflection and philosophy. But when you're 12 years old, you are not so interested in philosophy. Uh, you want to know what happens next. And you want the characters to be very, very in the foreground and to see whether, you know, would I like that? Would I be like that? If I were in that position, what would I do? That's what you do when you're 12 years old. Um, so you have to be very conscious of having a plot that is, that, that is exciting and also a character that is going to have difficulties and mm -hmm. going to have setbacks and maybe is sometimes a little unpleasant, but that is finally somebody who is fully recognizable as a human being. And that you can say, oh, I see why they did that, and I wish they hadn't done it, but, you know, maybe I would have done that too. Let's see how they get out of it. So um, even though my books for children are not, you know, too petit, mm -hmm. um, they're, 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 they are shorter, <laughs> and they have much less let me think about things in it. Et est-ce que vous pouvez donc euh, nous parler un peu de vos projets à venir ou euh, des ouvrages que vous avez en peut-être en cours d'écriture et qu'on qu espère euh, lire ensuite? Well, I, I'm, I'm in France for one year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is something I have planned for a very long time. And uh, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. I was in Paris for uh, about a month. And I, I began a novel on the subject of the, uh, the, 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 the Franco-Prussian War and the Siege of Paris and the Commune and, and artists. And um, it was too difficult for me to write. Uh, I, it was, got very complicated. And now I'm older <laughs> and have more experience. Mm -hmm. And so that is what I am working on. I'm, I'm working on a political novel. Uh, at like all of one of the other things that my books have in common is that they are very seldom about the great people who make history. Mm -hmm. They are about the people that history happens to. And so um, my, my characters are all people who really have other things to do and would rather there was not a war <laughs> and have no power. Um, so it's, it's actually a lot of fun, it feel, except, I mean, it's not, f f it's always fun to write for mm -hmm. me. It's just, you know, it's a pre dis discovery, a process of discovery, but um, it's kind of depressing. <laughs> uh, and it feels very much like um, the way I feel in America, mm -hmm. that, that, that what I want is not something that's happening around me. Uh, so it's uh, it's possibly the most political book I have written, and um, and I think it's 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 very engaging. But of course, I'm writing it, so of course it's <laughs> engaging. <laughs> But I'm very glad to be mm -hmm. here, where I can do research that is much harder to do than it is to do in America. Eh bien, merci beaucoup pour toutes ces passionnantes réponses. On espère que votre prochain L'ouvrage sera traduit en français aussi. Oh, J'espère. Et en tout cas, on vous lira avec plaisir. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Et, et merci à vous.